Hey friends, welcome to the channel. Today in this video, we're going to solve the final problem of week two of CS50, which is Caesar. So if you look at the description that is given to us, what you will find is we are basically supposed to build a encryption program, encryption and decryption program. So what that means is, for example, let's say the text entered by the user was ABC and the key provided to us was one, then the output should be B, C, D. What that means is we are basically adding one to the given input, right? So A, B, C plus one. So A becomes B, B becomes C and C becomes D, right? Similarly, if the input was X, Y, Z, then the output should be Y, Z, A, right? It should basically round about. It should take a rotation. Anyway, moving on, what we will see is if you look at the demo that is given to us, what you will see is we want to take the key from the user while executing the program. So what that means is when we are executing the program uh, dot false slash Caesar, it should not accept it, right? It should throw an error saying uses is this particular way. And then if the key entered by the user, if it's not a number, then again, same error. If the key is not formatted properly, as in if the key is one space two space three or anything else, should not be accepted. The only way that the key provided by the user should be accepted while executing the program is when the execution is, when the user executes the program this way, as in dot forward slash Caesar, which is the program's name, and then space key, which should be all together and it should be a number, right? Once this is done, once we verify that this particular order is met, then what we want to do is we want to prompt the user for plain text, right? We want to prompt the user for plain text and then the user will enter the value, the text that they want to uh, encrypt according to the key. And then we want to run some algorithm and then we want to print ciphertext, which is the encrypted message. And then H becomes H plus 13 is U and similarly everything else, right? Another thing to keep in mind is we want to encrypt only the alphabets, right? So for example, if exclamation is there, we don't want to do anything with it. If there's a space in between, we want to keep that space, right? Okay, so moving on. If you look at the specification, what you will see is implement your program in a file called caesar.c in a directory called caesar, right? So let me just copy the caesar text. We'll go to cs50.dev. And once we are here, we'll click on login and we'll give it a moment to load everything. Okay, once everything has loaded, what we will do is Let's expand this. So this is the folder that we built or that we created in the previous videos. So I'll just go to week two because this is the final program of week two. And then we'll say MKDIR, Caesar, press enter. We have a new folder and then we'll go to that folder. And then we'll say code Caesar.c, press enter. Okay, all right, there we go. We have our program here. Let me hide this so that you can see everything properly. Okay, now let's first do the bare bones, like the easiest thing that we can do. So that is, as include cs50.h, as include stdio.h. There's a function that we are going to use from this particular header file. Anyway, now let's do the bare bones, which is int main void. All right, and then let's try the pseudo came, uh, pseudocode which is first going to be, first we have to validate the command line argument as in this particular thing, right? So mm, validate, once we have done this, what we want to do next is then we want to take input from the user. Once this is done, another thing that we want to do is print the text, which is ciphertext. And this is plain text. The next thing that we have to keep in mind is when we, the program is being executed, we want to take the input from the user right during the execution, right? So what that means is int main void should not actually be void. If you remember from the lecture, there's a way to get the command line argument from the user, which is int arg c, the argument count, and then string arg v. This is going to be an array. So once we've done this, what we want to do is if first we want to check that there's only two command line arguments, 
the first command line argument is going to be this particular thing, the executing the program, and the second should be this, right? As in, if there's just one, then we want to throw an error saying this. If there's more than two, as in this and this, those are two, three and four. If there's more than two, again, we want to throw, uh, throw the error. This we'll check in a moment. First, let's just make sure that the argument count is correct. So what that means is if argc is not equals to two, what we want to do then is we want to say printf and let's just copy this error message, copy, paste, backslash n, semicolon, and then we want to quit the program right away. So what that means is if you remember from the lecture, when something succeeds, success, we have to print zero. If there's a failure, some error, we want to have the return value of anything other than one, as in other than zero. So it could be one or 404 or anything else. Anyway, once we have this, what we need is let's return something. Let's return one because this is an error, right? And similarly, once we have checked this, the next thing that we want to make sure of is that the key entered by the user is a digit is a number so to do that we will need to check something right let's go to manual once we are here what you will see is let's just search for number anything related to number uh, nothing really helpful let's search for digit so there's a header file called ctype.h we already in which we already included in line 4 and inside that there's a function called is digit right so this particular function takes a character as input which is c and then it returns hold on uh, blah, 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 blah. okay this function returns a non-zero integer if c is decimal digit and zero if c is not a decimal digit okay so let's imagine that when the program is being executed by the user they enter this uh caesar one three right so how do we check whether or not it is a digit we would have to first check this, the first character of the in, uh, inputted value, and then the second one. Basically, we need a loop for that. So for int i equals zero, and then n equals sterling, and we're going to say arg v one. This arg v one is very important because the when the program is executed, it takes this entire thing as an array input. So that means in the array, at the zero index is dot false slash Caesar, and in the first index, that is index one, there's the value as in the key that we need, right? Okay, so when i is less than n, i plus plus. Hold on, let me add some line. All right, so what we want to do then is if is digit arg v1 i so what happens is when we when we pass a character in this particular function that is is digit it returns a non zero integer if it is decimal and zero if it is not a decimal digit right so what that means is if the return value was zero is equal to zero then it is not a digital a decimal digit right so if this happens, what we can do is right away, we can do this. We can copy and paste, right? Again, we want to throw an error and we want to exit the program. Cool, this is done. We validated the command line argument, which is nice. The next thing that we want to do is, okay, let's just make sure that mm, the key that we got from the user is now a digit because initially when we are doing this, the entered key value is currently in form of string so what that means is the key currently is for example 13 if we were to take uh, this as example it's currently 13 it's a character it's a string right what we want to do is we want to make it 13 an integer right so what that means is we want to somehow convert our entered value which is rv1 to a string uh, to a digit to an integer so what that means is let's come here and let's search for um, integer okay standard lib which we already included i hope 
yeah line 5 standard lib inside this header file there's a way to convert a string to an integer which is a to i how do we use it we say okay a to i and we pass in the string value so what that means is we will put all of this here and we'll say a to i and then we'll make this an integer right all right we got it we already have the header file which is good and now we have the key so let's check the input from the user to do that we'll say string i missed the semicolon get string plain text all right once we have the input from the user we want to then print the encrypted text so what that means is printf we want to say cipher text i hope the spelling is correct cipher text the reason why we are not adding a backslash n is because first we want to print this and then in the same line we want to print like our rest of the encrypted text encrypted characters so first we'll print this particular thing and then what we will do is we want to run a loop so again int i equals zero n is equals to sterlen so inside sterlen we want to count the number of characters for plain which is the text that was entered by the user and then again while i is less than n i plus plus so this will allow us to go through the plain text that was entered by the user now we what we want to do is first if it is an alphabet which we will check by coming here is alpha all right if you see here inside c type there's an is alpha okay cool and what we want to check is plain i if the particular character is an alphabet then we want to check two cases if it is uppercase is upper i guess mm, and here is upper yeah there's an is upper is upper and then there's also a is lower function inside c type so if it's an uppercase plain i let me do this and if it's not a uppercase if it's an alphabet and if it's not a uppercase character then of course it's a lowercase so i'll add a comment line here so if it's an alphabet then we want to do this we want to encrypt it and if it's not alphabet so that means it could be a question marker exclamation or space value if it's not an alphabet we just want to print it print f mm. percent is c plain i add a semicolon encrypt if it's not an alphabet we want to use a temporary variable and let's call that temp for now int temp equals zero okay once we have this what we're going to do next is we want to encrypt the message that we, that is given right but before we do that there's a couple of things that we want to make sure of that is that our key value is usable what that means is let's open the ascii chart what you will see is for the uh, uppercase characters uppercase alphabet the value starts at 65 and then it goes up to 90 right let's imagine that the plain text entered by the user was abc right which is 65 66 67 and then the key provided was for example 26 right then what would happen is we would want this a to take around and then come back to a b to take around and then come back to b c to take around and come back to c so up to 26 it's fine but if we go beyond 26 it gets really difficult right so what i mean by that is hold on uh here what we want to do is like we already know that after every 26 values it takes a roundabout right so what that means is if key or basically while key is greater than 26 what we want to do is we want to subtract is subtract it minus equals 26 once we have fixed the value for key what we want to do next is we want to use a temporary vari variable to encrypt it to encrypt our message so we'll say int temp for temporary is zero let's initiate it with zero and then we'll change the value accordingly and then what we want to do is if 
now hold on let's say temp equals the plain text the character that we have and then we want to add the key to it right and once this is done what we want to make sure of is let's say that the value entered by the user the plain text entered by the user was a z or z right so if the key was 2 when we are talking about uppercase the maximum value that we can reach is 90 and if it goes above 90 what we want to do is we want to basically subtract 26 from it so for example if the key was 2 the value would be 92 right 90 plus 2 and then if we subtract 26 because there are 26 alphabets we would go back to 2 and 92 minus 26 would be 66 66 is b right so if temp is greater than 90 which is the maximum value that we can have while a given character is uh, uppercase if this is the case what we want to do is printf percentage c temp minus 26 this is super super important and if it is not greater than 90 then that's good we just want to print it so that means else printf temp that's all that we want to do which is nice so once this is done this is for the uppercase right let me just copy all of this so if it is not a uppercase and if it is an alphabet then of course it's a lowercase value I'll just paste everything here and then the only thing that is going to change is this particular value because in lowercase the maximum value that we can go up to is 122 so as in if it is greater than 122 in that case we want to like basically subtract 26 because if it is greater than 122 then we are going in the territory that we don't want to access because it would give us an error so hopefully this should work let's make caesar presenter i am missing a semicolon right here all this happens make caesar again oh of course okay clear the screen make caesar again good caesar presenter error nice similarly caesar if i say abc error good similarly if i say 1a error nice and now if i say this one okay so abc abc xyz xyz okay this will be probably this will cover all the possible values so abc becomes bcd nice capital abcd abc becomes capital bcd xyz yz which is nice one thing that we are missing is we should move all of this value in the next line so what that means is once our loop is over the loop which is starting here the green curly brace has come down once this is over we want to print a new line printf backslash n semicolon so let's make caesar again this is good let's clear the screen and then finally let's have a look at our program let's check whether or not our program is correct so whoops i'll copy all of this thing come here paste it press enter let's wait for a moment all right there we go all green which is great the ne next thing that we want to do is we want to check the style if you want copy paste what i like to do is i like to click here style 50 top right corner press here if you want you can read everything or basically see the suggestions or the best way is just click on apply changes and looks good wonderful come here let's submit it copy the submission code come back here i'll clear the screen paste it press enter and then keeping in mind the courses academic honesty policy whatever yes press enter okay our program is submitted and now we can command click or control click to see our score we got 11 on 11 for our logic and we got a full point for our style which is wonderful another thing to keep in mind is if you want all the other solutions for all the other upcoming assignments make sure to subscribe to the channel and watch this playlist up next i'll see you in the other video see you then bye